So we've been talking about significant figures and um, how to figure out how many significant figures are in a measured quantity. Um, the rules that we went over on the previous page. Um, so just a quick review. Zeros in the middle of a number are significant, like this zero right here. And zeros at the beginning of a number are not significant. They're placeholders. Zeros at the end of a number before an implied decimal point are not significant. Those are implied. And then zeros after an explicit, explicit decimal point are significant. So now we're going to embark upon calculations involving significant figures. And it is important to know the rules um, on how many significant figures you should have in calculations because um, precision of measurement is expressed through significant figures. So if you express five or six significant figures when your instrument was only accurate to three, then you're misleading people. Um, so and this is especially true if you think about science publications. You have to be sure to use the correct number of significant figures. Um, so let's look at this first example. Um, how many significant figures would you have in your answer? So this is trying to figure out how many miles per gallon your vehicle gets. So um, when I enter this into my calculator, and this, by the way, is that TI30X2S, the one that I recommend getting um, because it has a two-line display, 42.3 divided by 2.8. So your calculator, unfortunately, does not adjust for significant figures. It would be nice if it could, but it doesn't. So it would be incorrect to record all of these digits because we don't have that many significant figures. So I've given you some choices on how many significant figures you would record. And it turns out that the correct answer so the correct number of significant figures is 15 miles per gallon. That's what MPG stands for, miles per gallon. So that brings us to rule number one for significant figures. This applies with multiplication or division. So multiplication or division or division, the answer cannot have more significant figures than either of the original numbers. Answer, whoops. All right, so what does that mean? Let's see. Well, let's go back to the original calculation. If you look here, 42.3, how many significant figures does that have? Well, that has three sig figs. And then if you look at 2.8, how many significant figures does that have? Two. So your answer cannot have more than two sig figs. So that's how we ended up with this one because it has two sig figs. So kind of the shortened version of this rule, go with the lowest number of sig figs. Okay. Now let's go to the next calculation. How many significant figures would you have in your answer? So I have 2.23 plus 4.8197. So I enter this into my calculator. And I get 
And so a lot of students are tempted to just copy that down and say, okay, my calculator doesn't lie, it never lies, this is correct, it's what my calculator said. But remember, your calculator does not take into consideration significant figures. So, it turns out the correct answer here is 7.05. Let me give you the rule and then we'll go back and see why that is. So this rule applies to addition or subtraction. You want to look after the decimal. And I'll explain that in a second. So answer cannot have more after the decimal than either of the original numbers. Okay, so answer cannot have more after the decimal than either of the original numbers. So if you look up here, and when I say after the decimal, I mean to the right of the decimal. Okay, so I'm highlighting after the decimal. Um, this one has 2 after the decimal. This one has 4 after the decimal. So your answer cannot have more than 2 after the decimal. So that eliminates this one. This one has one, two, three. That eliminates this one. So that's three AD. This is one, two, three, three AD. Um, and this is two AD. This is two AD. And this is one AD. Okay, so let's look and see why those two are different. If we go back to our calculator, we end up with 7.0497. 0497. So we need to stop at 2 after the decimal. So even though this is a 0, it's still a digit. So we still consider this. So this is 1, 2 after the decimal. We put our bracket here. We keep everything on this side. And then we drop everything else. On this side. You need to look at this digit right here, the first one that you're dropping. That is going to influence your rounding. So if it's five or higher, the first digit that you drop, you're not looking at the second or the third or the fourth or the fifth, you're just looking at the first one, then you're going to round this up to five. So this is going to be 7.05. So that's how we got that answer. So I'll go over rounding in just a second too. Okay, so to summarize addition and subtraction, go with the lowest after the decimal. So on the next page, I address rounding. And I have so many students who do excellent work. They get the correct number of significant figures. Um, they think about their rules, and then they forget how to round. So be careful with this. I'll give you some practice on this. So with rounding, if the first digit you remove is 4 or less, remove it or drop it in all of the following digits. So 4 or less. Okay, so 2.4271, it says adjust to two significant figures. You're going to put your bracket here. I'm a big fan of this bracket, by the way. Um, if it works for you, definitely keep using it. If you don't understand it, then don't feel like you have to use it. Um, so what this bracket means, we're going to keep all this stuff, and we're going to drop all this stuff. So... That's how I define my bracket. Okay, so um, you see that this digit here 
is less than 4. So that means when I adjust it to two significant figures, it's just going to look like this, 2.4. I'm not going to round that 4 up to 5. Now, let's go to the next case. If the first digit you remember is 5 or greater, round the number up by adding 1 to the digit you're keeping. Okay, so 4.5832 adjust to two significant figures. So remember, I'm going to keep stuff to the left, drop the stuff to the right, but I only look at the first digit that I'm getting that I'm getting ready to drop. So I look at that first digit. Oh, it's definitely greater than 5. So that means I'm going to add 1 to that this 5 right here. Since 8 is greater than 5, I'm going to add 1 to the 5 that I'm keeping and I get 4.6. Okay. So I want you to practice rounding because like I said, I have a lot of students who make mistakes on rounding and it breaks my heart because I, I want you all to succeed and I love the fact that my students have gotten the correct number of significant figures. They just messed up on the rounding. So this question I say round each of the following numbers to three significant figures. So in the beginning, you're, you know, just getting used to this. I recommend putting brackets. That's three sig figs. Three sig figs. Oh, now be careful on this one. Remember these zeros? These are placeholders. So I want you to hit pause, work on these, struggle for a bit, and then come back. Um, it's good for you to try to work through these. So hit pause, and then you can get the answers. Okay, so... Um, 200.9, uh, three significant figures. The first digit you're dropping is five or greater, so you're going to add one to the first one you're keeping, so that's 201. All right, 1342, two is four or less, so I'm not going to round. So at first glance, you might think, oh, I'll just get 134. But think about it this way. If I owe you $1,342 for whatever, I, you, can, you can be creative about that, but so if I owe you $1,342 and I give you $134 and I say, hey, we're even, I'm smiling and happy, right? Uh, you wouldn't be too happy with me. However, if I gave you $1,340 and say, Hey, I don't have two dollars extra. I'm just I'll get you a coffee another day. You might be a lot happier with me. So what happens when you have large numbers and um, you round? So you need to put a placeholder here. Um, this is the beauty of scientific notation because you could also say 1.34 times 10 to the third. And that kind of addresses any ambiguity that might arise. So this is three significant figures. This is three significant figures. So just be aware of that. Um, if it's a large number and you're rounding, it might be that you need to put a placeholder. Or you could use scientific notation. I accept either. And I know a lot of instructors would do the same. Okay. This next one, these zeros are all placeholders. You're going to have to put your bracket 1, 2, 3 in. So you're going to end up with 0 0.000326. That 5 gets rounded up to a 6. Okay, this one is going to you're going to round up. So you get 10 here, which rounds out up to 10, which rounds this up to 5. So it's going to be 500. Now, careful. I said three sig figs. This only has one sig fig now, because these would be placeholders. So what you need to do is put a decimal here, or again, you could use scientific notation, 5.00 times 10 to the second. And lastly, three sig figs would be here. This is five or greater, so it's going to be four, two, three. If I owed you $42,251, and I only gave you $423, you might unhappy with me. So you need to put those zeros as placeholders or you can have 4.23 times 10 to the fourth. So keep these rules in mind for rounding. Um, 
definitely we're going to be doing conversion problems that have a lot of steps and at the very end you have to think about significant figures as well as rounding so it's a skill that once you perfect it will it will really serve you well all right so on the next page we have um, some practice problems and I want to go over um, calculations involving both multiplication and division and addition and subtraction. So the first step with these problems is to do parentheses. So remember the order of operations from math or maybe you don't. That's okay. Um, we'll cover it here. So with these types of problems, you have two steps. And we're going to round at the very end, carry additional digits through. Okay, so let's do the parentheses first, 5.67 minus 2.3. Okay, now if you're thinking, we just went over these rules, and with subtraction, it's after the decimal. So I have one after the decimal, or two after the decimal here and I have one after the decimal here, my answer can only have one after the decimal. So, but when we have multi-step operations like we're doing right now, we're gonna carry this additional digit through. So I'm gonna put a line under here. So I'm gonna say not significant. This is carried through for calculation sake. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is do the next part of this operation. You're going to take 3.489 and I'm getting this from up here. Um, and we figured out what was in the parentheses. So we're going to multiply 3.489 times 3.37 Okay. Now, this is multiplication and division. So remember that you're supposed to um, go with the least number of significant figures. So I have four sig figs here, and I have two sig figs here. So remember with multiplication, you don't look after the decimal. You're just looking at significant figures. So you have three... 3.489 times 3.37. So I get 11.75793. So 11.75793. And I'm going to round that to two significant figures. So I put my bracket here, and I end up with 12. Okay. So we've learned the different rules for addition and subtraction, multiplication and division. Um, when applied to significant figures, we've learned rounding, we've learned how to do multi-step operations. Now what I want you to do is practice. So I have some simpler ones as opposed to these multi-step ones in the beginning. And then uh, on the next page, I do the last problem, number seven, as a multi-step one. So I want you to hit pause, work through these, Think about rounding, think about your rules. You might have to flip back to the previous page. Okay, so 14 times three, I get 42. My answer, this is multiplication. So I have three sig figs here. I have one sig fig here. My answer cannot have more than one. So if I owe you $42 and I just give you $4, you're going to be pretty upset with me, but if I give you $40, you might be a little bit happier with me. 
So remember, multiplication and division, sig figs. Addition and subtraction after a decimal. Okay, so this next one, 14.16 plus 3.2, that's addition. We're going to have to look after the decimal. Um, so I have 2 after the decimal here, 1 after the decimal here, 17.36. So we need to have 1 after the decimal, so I end up with 17.4. Number 3 is uh, division. So 14 divided by 3, so I'm going to go with the lowest number of significant figures. 4.6666 repeating 7, so I end up with bracket there, end up with 5. All right, 46.6 plus 5.72. So I'm going to go with 1 after the decimal, 2 after the decimal. I can only have 1 after the decimal, so 52.3. And then number five is another addition one. So I have three after the decimal here. And careful here, you're just looking at anything after the decimal. It can be zeros. So this is four after the decimal. 6.378 plus 0 0.0025. And I end up with 6.3805. Okay, I can only have three after the decimal. So I end up with 6.3. Eight, one. And then the next one is a division. 6.38 divided by 42.6. Four sig figs, three sig figs. My answer can only have three sig figs. Oops. 0 0.1497. So three sig figs would be here. That 7 is going to round that 9 up to 10, so the 10 will round that 4 up to 5. So, there you go. Um, and then lastly, this multi-step problem. Okay, so you're going to do the parentheses first. So 5.4 times 0 0.916. So I had two and three, two sig figs, three sig figs. So 4.94, 4.94, 4. Um, I just needed to have two sig figs. So I could put a line under all of these and then do the subtraction. So this is my first step. And my second step, 4.94. 9464 19.667. I missed that. So I'm going to have 3 AD here and only 1 AD here. So when I calculate this out, 19.667 minus 4.9464. End up with 14.7206 and end up with 14.7. Okay. So practice, practice, practice. Do your homework problems that pertain to these, um, they will really help you. Um, especially when it comes to conversions and future problems in chemistry, any chemistry course you have, whether it's this prep course or whether it's um, the next chemistry course you take, significant figures and rounding are so important. So I know they can drive you nuts, but keep working on them. You will get it.